everybody, how are you all doing? It's Len here and today I'm not going to do a talking head video. I am going to take you through my little travel journal here. If you've seen the how I plan my solo trip to Japan on a budget, something like that title uh, video, you know that I had with me a journal where I wrote everything down from when I was preparing my trip, like all the brainstorming, all the ideas, all the activities, um, put into areas, into categories. Well, yeah, this is it. And yeah, as you can see, it's it's traveled with me. It's been places. <laughs> it's been through a typhoon, two typhoons actually, got completely soaking wet inside my backpack. Had to dry it with a hairdryer. It's got a lot of documents in there that I just stuck inside for memories. And uh, yeah, let me show you what it looked like before. This is it. This is the same journal. <laughs> so yeah, it started out really simple, all clean, all nice, just a bunch of things written inside. But as I traveled, stickers started coming along. Some of them I bought. These are from a, a label store in Osaka. They're really good quality and really cool. And some of them I got along the way from Rabbit Island. These ones I got for free in a store. Uh, this is the, my embarrassing Purikura experience because I was all alone. I wanted to experience the Purikura, but yeah, it's not something that you usually do by yourself. You can, but it was embarrassing. And yeah, here's some more. I got a map of Japan that I drew. This is a free sticker that I got, some things from Hakone. Yeah, so if you don't know anything about my trip to Japan, I went there for 20-ish days all by myself. It was my first big trip all to myself, all by myself. And this, I think, is probably the best souvenir I could have. I brought back a bunch of things. I also made a video about what I brought back from Japan, but the best souvenir is this. Because I can flip through it and remember where I went, what I did, look at all the random ticket stumps and... Well, you'll see. Let's get into it. I have to hold this together because of how wound it is. Here we go. This is my departure date. Departure day. Here you have... I drew the, the currency here so I could remember it. And here is the day I left on the Polaroid. Yes, let's go. Here you have all the dates color-coded by area where I went. So Tokyo, Osaka, Nara, Kyoto, green is Hiroshima. The little uh, pink one here is Hakone. And here is my SIM card. That I glued as you can see yeah it's it got drenched it got pretty soaked sim card the do's and don'ts these are all the things I wrote down before my trip here's when I leave I wrote everything down there is plans and airports because I I've never traveled alone before this I haven't been on a plane all by myself before so I wrote everything down my packing tips random things I found along the way, origami paper that I received at one point, I liked the color of that lipstick if I remember clearly, useful phrases, <laughs> more I think that's yeah that's my sim card with my little illustration thank god for gps, whoa you're gonna see it's gonna get more and more messy, Toko is the first place I stayed at, the first inn I stayed and it was really really cool I love Toko, and here are some of the area maps they gave me. My Japan Rail Pass voucher, this is what it looks like when you receive it and you exchange it when you arrive. Some more transportation tips, and here is where it starts to get interesting because this is where I arrive. Yes, this is my ticket stump from the Narita Express to Ikebukuro, so when I arrived to the airport, first train I took. actually. I completely forgot that story because when I arrived at Narita, completely out of it after 14 hours flight, I got interviewed by a like TV crew and I don't remember anything that happened during that interview. I don't know what I said, I don't know what they asked, I just can't remember. I was like completely out of it, but I do remember that they wanted to see some of my art, I think, because I said I was an artist and I didn't have any on me, I don't think, and I was just like, oh, it's in my suitcase, I don't know. It could have been like a good opportunity and I completely messed up. 
here is the Tokyo section where you have everything divided into areas with all these activities like Ginza and Tsukiji, Roppongi, Akasaka, and yeah, ramen. You'll see, it's a big, it's a big mess. The things I've highlighted are the things I did. So as you can see, I didn't, compared to all the things I wrote down that I was like maybe planning to do, I didn't do that many of them. It takes a lot more time <laughs> than, than planned. The pity could I again, where I was really embarrassed. All my ticket stumps. I kept everything, guys. Here's like the floor plan for my uh, first capsule hotel experience. This is from the um, Tenyugumi, the calligraphy class. I, well, not really class, experience I had. <laughs> my first gacha. Gardens, ticket stumps. Here you can see that I did a lot because it was my favorite area. Ueno, Yenisen, and Asakusa was definitely, definitely my favorite. It's where I got my first fortune, and it was a very good one. So I was so happy. More Tokyo. See, here we go on to food per category. Tokyo Sky Tree. Here I even kept the instructions on how to reheat my Nikuman that I bought. I don't even know where. Uh, Misukoshi, I think? Yeah, and I completely failed at that, by the way. <laughs> it became all hard and weird, but it was still delicious. Shopping. As you can see, I went to a few shopping areas. Pokemon Center. I'm obsessed with Pokemon. First gen Pokemon. And here are the, like, the cards I bought. I know, I kept everything. I hoarded everything into here but I love it it's a wonderful souvenir here we arrive in Kyoto and as you can see everything has been soaked by the rain everything is all like I don't know how you call this everything is all torn and a little ruined but I still kept it all from my experiences in Kyoto yay it's kind of a game to unfold all of these I started finding the stamps everywhere and I had fun with them even though I'm not really sure what they're for. Somebody tell me what they're for. Yay. More maps. More maps, more of Kyoto. This is from the my hiking in uh, Kibune and Kurama. This is the um, Zen food, like the vegan cuisine restaurant I went to. That was really yummy. These are all my Shinkansen tickets between Osaka and Kyoto. So I went quite a few times back and forth, <laughs> as you can see. Yay! Um, yeah, so this is from Kuramadera. This is my um, tea experience. Here is Osaka, again, areas, all the things I could do. Dotonbori is definitely the area for street food. I wrote down that I had some takoyaki and some gyoza and some crepes. Here is my aquarium um, ticket stump. The <laughs> tragic Umeda sky building because it was the day of the hurricane. Not the hurricane, the typhoon. Yes. <laughs> definitely. Um, this is the sticker shop I went to. This is... <laughs> A random combini like scratch card that I don't really know what to do so I guess I'll never know what I won from a 7-eleven Nara this is from Nara <laughs> it was a short stay Nara is really short so this is all I had written just one page worth you can visit Nara in a day definitely Yay! and this is the infamous map that got eaten by the deer I just kept it and yeah, then we go on to Hiroshima, where I also kept pretty much everything. These are the buses you can take with your JR Pass, and which will get you just about anywhere. It's a tourist bus, so it just it goes in a loop and stops at a lot of touristy places. So it's really useful. From the Memorial Museum, Hiroshima was one of my favorite places. Also with Miyajima, here you got another fortune, a good one, because I still have it. More ticket stumps, Miyajima, the, all of these. <sighs> Such good memories! Oh yeah, the Miyajima ferries. Yes, 
and I went to <laughs> another Pokemon Center in Hiroshima and got a gacha. I made a list of the tattoo friendly onsen also as part of preparation to my trip so if you're interested in that well, I don't even think you can see what I wrote but there are some tattoo friendly baths and onsen. There was one in Tokyo, uh, that one was in Kyoto, I went to this one I forgot to highlight it in Hakone um, this one I did not go to, I don't remember that one. Uh, oh, Okunashima! Well, not much to write because there wasn't a lot to do in there and I didn't get a lot of time anyway, but I kept my baggie of rabbit food, got my stamp. Yay, Rabbit Island! And this is my last stop, which was Hakone and Owakudani. Yeah. <laughs> Took the Shinkansen all the way back to Tokyo and then dropped off my stuff and went back to Hakone for just one night. It was a bit of a rush, but I don't regret doing it at all. This is... So here you can see I have my Hakone free pass and here is my romance car pass. This is the bus schedule that the guy from the onsen gave me and I couldn't understand what he was asking me because I, I thought he was saying, do you need a bath? And I was like, I just, I just came from the onsen, I, I had a bath. But he was asking if I needed a bus. Yes! <laughs> That's the loop I did from Hakone Yumoto. Then you have the railway to Goda, and then the uh, cable car, the ropeway to Oakudani. And then you have a cruise on Lake Ashi, where you have the f another floating gate here, and then back to Hakone Yumoto. It's a nice little loop, you can do it in a day. Yeah! And I think that's all of it for the areas. Then I have. This is my. <laughs> train ticket to go, my plane ticket to go, so excited, yes I arrived! And like I said, I was so nervous that I had to write everything down, every detail. So like literally, arrived at the airport at that time, this terminal, you have to go like uh, through luggage drop and security, all the things that for some people is second nature. I had to write it down because of how nervous I was to have to do this all by myself. It's like A or T gate on the left and the B gate is on the right and arrive at the south wing and then you have to go through the quarantine. I wrote everything down, even for like the SIM card. It was like, go to Ikebukuro, east exit, and then you have to walk there. <laughs> Same with Toko. I did that for everything and still managed to get lost a lot of the time, see? like this hotel and to go to the to Osaka you ask for this Shinkansen and you need to ask for non-smoking and all of that yeah <laughs> and this is the day I left I was so sad I even kept a little candy from the ANA flight <laughs> that's how nostalgic I was oh going back home oh, this is always glued together yeah luggage tags uh, this is the bus you can take instead of um ah come on this is the bus you can take if you can't take the narita express because my jr pass expired so to go back to the airport i just paid like just under 10 euros and took a bus and here is my train ride from the airport to go home <laughs> if, I'm, I'm usually always happy to go home but in that case i was just like oh japan Travel checklist. These are more of the things I prepared, like expenses, and I already did expenses. You can see that in my video that I made about the budget. Things I've noticed so far, these you'll have to wait and see because I think I'm gonna make a video about that if it's not already done. I don't know in which order I'm doing these. Yeah, I think that's all. Yeah, just here at the end, you have all the phone numbers, literally hospitals, Europe assistance, like insurance all the phone numbers, the tourist information centers, wrote them down here. The Suica card that I kept, which is my IC card for the subway and you can use it on vending machines. Anyway, I kept it because I'm sure I'll be going back and this is my beloved JR Pass. As you can see, it's pretty full. I went a lot of places. I started running out of places for stamps. I don't even think they st I got a stamp for every single time. but. Yeah, this is what your JPL pass will look like, probably with a different cover, but yeah, that was a very good decision. And here you have all my maps, because I didn't have a color printer, so I printed it out in black and white and colored all the lines, but it really did help because I could like write things down 
like which areas aren't good like this is the place I stayed at in Iria near Ueno this that's where Toko is I had a good idea of what the Yamanote line looked like and which stops were on there it really does help guys same with Osaka that's the loop line oh I had the Kyoto one but Kyoto is mainly buses so this wasn't really relevant and when I tried using it I just got so lost I think that was the day I got the most lost ever yeah and here we go this is my travel journal I hope this was of interest to you I wasn't really sure if that would be interesting for anybody but I really wanted to make it because I'm really happy to have this and I'm sure there are a lot of creative people out there that would do much better job at doing these like gorgeous pages with illustrations and everything. Me was mainly my buddy, my companion, my source of information. But I didn't really have the time to stop and make it look like really beautiful. I just put everything in there, I did like little illustrations here and there. And I love it the way it is. I'm sure it could inspire people to do like these amazing travel journals. Or just give other people an idea of what you can write down when you leave. Well, just to have all the information in one spot. I hope that made sense. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is it. This is my best souvenir. And I really recommend that if you go anywhere for a big trip that you've been looking forward to for a long time, to make one of these, to keep forever. Yeah, for sure. You should do that. Anyway, thank you for watching, guys. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. And I'll see you very soon in another video. I... wait. Which way? This way. I outward you all. I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye! Mm -hmm.